mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today on the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter we're thinking of the beautiful biblical image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd caring for his sheep and we remember the words of the Lord Jesus who said I am the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd lays down his life for his flock. Let's pray together and first we pray using the words of the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord have mercy upon us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The 23rd Psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
I prepares the table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As our Gospel reading, some words from John's Gospel, chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I thought that today I'd like to share with you a few pictures of things that can be seen around the rectory. Now I realise that we're more fortunate than most in this regard because at the rectory we're surrounded by beautiful countryside and every day during the lockdown we can go out into the garden or we can just look out the window and watch all sorts of things. For example the rabbits in the garden, they seem to be increasing in number every day and the cows in the Glebeland field beside us and the sheep in the next field over beyond that. The rabbits especially provide us with endless entertainment. They're hilarious. They're all a bit mad. The cows obviously think that we're a bit mad because if we go out to do anything in the garden, they all come over to watch us. But the view of the sheep, 
that we get from the back window is just a beautiful rural scene. It's tranquility, it's serenity, and it always reminds me of what the Bible says about sheep and shepherds. Shepherds and sheep are mentioned quite often in the Bible, from Abel, the son of Adam and Eve, looking after his flocks, to Moses, tending the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro in the desert of Midian, to the shepherd boy David, who grew up to be king of Israel, to the shepherds who were amongst the first visitors to visit the new baby when Jesus was born. Shepherds are mentioned often, but it's the image of the good shepherd that stands right through the whole of scripture. And it depicts someone who not only looks after sheep, but of course looks after God's people as well. In the Old Testament, God himself is described as the shepherd of his people Israel. It's summed up beautifully in the words of Psalm 23, so familiar to us, where David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Or in the words of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. Isaiah says, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. As we move into the New Testament, we see not only God as the shepherd of his people Israel, but more specifically Jesus as the good shepherd, tending his flock, caring for his people. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, it calls him that great shepherd of the sheep. In 1 Peter 2.25, Peter refers to Jesus as the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And again in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus is called the chief shepherd. It's a beautiful picture from scripture to hold in our minds that Jesus is the good shepherd who knows his sheep and calls his sheep individually by name. And that, of course, is the image that stands at the heart of the 23rd Psalm, one of the best known passages in the whole of the Bible. It's a passage that's often read at funerals and in times of critical illness, because it brings both hope and comfort into dark situations, when we're faced with our own frailty or indeed with our own mortality. But I believe that those words resonate with us because they describe so eloquently what our relationship with the Lord is meant to be. When we say the Lord is my shepherd, that means that we are God's people. As the Bible says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And even though we may err and stray from his ways like lost sheep sometimes, still the good shepherd calls us by name. The good shepherd seeks for the lost sheep and wants to carry us home to himself. I once heard the 23rd Psalm summed up beautifully in four little words that could almost make a little rhyme. The first thing is that the good shepherd feeds us. The Psalm begins by telling us that if the Lord truly is our shepherd, then we lack nothing. We lack nothing. And that means that we are fed and we are nourished within our souls by God's word and by his spirit living in us. Later on, it talks about God preparing a table before us, preparing a banquet for us, that God has prepared, the psalmist says, even in the presence of our enemies. So the good shepherd nourishes us and feeds us and sustains us in our spiritual life. Secondly, the good shepherd leads us. He leads us in green pastures, the psalm says, the very place where we can find nourishment and sustenance for our spiritual life, where we can lie down securely. He leads us beside still waters, where we can find rest for our souls, and peace of mind and heart in the Lord's presence. That's what the Good Shepherd offers to us. 
and he leads us in the paths of righteousness whereby we can learn to live in a way that pleases God, learn to live as God would want from us. Then thirdly, the good shepherd tends us. In other words, he cares for us. He cares for us perfectly through his goodness and mercy, which follow us, the psalmist says, all the days of our lives. And the Bible assures us that God is good to his people. God is good all the time and he's merciful even when we don't deserve mercy and fourthly and finally this psalm reminds us that the good shepherd defends us above all else he defends us from darkness from the darkness of the shadow of death and the fear of evil that doesn't mean that no harm will ever befall us but it does mean that no matter what befalls us those who trust in the Lord, those who commit their lives into the hands of the Good Shepherd need fear no evil. God is actually with us. His rod and his staff, his presence really do comfort us. And it means that no matter what, those who trust in the Good Shepherd will always be safe in his keeping. They can say with confidence, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the 23rd Psalm reminds us of all those things. The Good Shepherd feeds us. The Good Shepherd leads us. The Good Shepherd tends us by caring for us. And the Good Shepherd defends us even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He defends us from the ultimate consequences of sin and death. I said it was like a little rhyme. He feeds us and leads us. He tends us and defends us. May we entrust our lives into the hands of the Good Shepherd. Amen. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, again, we're sharing communion under very unusual circumstances during the coronavirus lockdown. But I hope that for our service this morning, you did have some opportunity to prepare for communion 
bringing a little piece of bread, a little bit of wine or grape juice or something similar so that you could share in the communion. But even if you didn't, don't worry. The important thing is that we bring our prayers and our praises together to the Lord. And you're united with us in spirit and in faith as we do this. So we're going to use just a short form of the communion prayer. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So now please take and eat bread in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. way after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink from this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me so now please drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful And we pray as Christ our Lord commanded. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us, to lay down his life and to rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the words of the post-communion prayer as we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Empower us, Lord, by your Spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory. 
Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.